Hello, this is Prince of Somnia, and I'm just taking a little break here on Let's Play Pokemon Emerald. The last time, um, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure what we did last time. I think last time was the gym fight against Whitney, or not Whitney, <laughs> no, wrong game, um, against Flannery, um, down in that gym down there. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it's been several months since I've last done a recording session. Over two, I believe, now? Uh, the last recording session happened sometime in early October, and it is currently January the 17th. Yeah. If that's any indication just how obscene the turnaround period for this Let's Play has been, I, I really don't know what is. Anyway, something that's been bothering me for a really long time now in editing is, uh, Strike's nature. So I looked it up, he's docile nature, he's not adamant, like, I finally figured out he needs really bad things for Cassiopeia and really, really good things for, uh, Tyranno over here. But, uh, docile nature for Mainectric, that's completely neutral, it doesn't boost or reduce any of his stats. Yeah, his stats. Uh, let's see, I believe Quirky Nature is also completely neutral... Yeah, it's completely neutral. So, you know, it, it could be better, it could be so much worse. Um, part of the problem here is because uh, Cassiopeia has the Adamant Nature and Synchronize, um, every Pokémon I find out in the wild has an increased chance of having the Adamant Nature if she's out front first. But fortunately, I managed to dodge multiple bullets, so... Well, actually, Adamant Nature wouldn't have been bad for, uh, Belch over there, but whatever. Um, anyway, eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that Bahamut here isn't in... Oops. In the party, and that's because... Oh, he's also quirky. I guess we've got ourselves a quirky mini-boss squad going on here. Um, but that's because right now he's horribly weak, and I would train him were it not for the fact that I really, really would like Tyranno to evolve today, if at all possible. Now, I realize that's probably not going to happen, because he won't evolve for many levels, but... You know what? I am going to do my darndest to try. Are you a trainer? I don't think you are. Anyway, another reason why I don't have um, Bahamut in the party is because I need Rock Smash. Uh, because in order to get to Mauville from here, you need Rock Smash, unless you feel like going the long way around, which is horribly inefficient. If only I had a way of just traveling to any city I want to in the game for free. Sadly, we have no such way. Yet. You know I knew that was going to happen the minute I started bunny hopping in place. Christ. Anyway, like I said before, our goal for today is to get an obscene amount of levels in a short amount of time as humanly possible. Okay, saying it out loud just makes it sound like this is a total grind fest, and okay, to be honest it is, but whatever. Anyway, if you climb all the way back up to Mount Chimney, or take the cable car, whichever, I, I, I don't know why I went down Jagged Pass, it took longer. Anyway, <laughs> um, if you come back after you've ousted Team Magma, you've got a couple of trainers here. Um, and since I'm going to be fighting so many trainers today, I figured I might as well just like speed up the trainers I'm going to be fighting here on Mount Chimney and over in the desert, and just meet you guys back at the end of it all. I'll be doing post-commentary for all of that stuff, so don't worry about it. So anyway, without uh, further ado, let's go! I'm never going to say that again. Okay, we're going to be going into a little bit of post commentary here. This is something I don't do all that often, so I figured, you know, now would be a pretty good time to test it out since I'm doing not a whole lot other than, um, fighting a whole bunch of trainers and speeding up and playing some music over it, so, you know, why not just post-commentate stuff I want to talk about? Um, a couple of episodes ago, I forget which one, I believe it was episode 10 or 11, whichever one I named Wally's Turf, um, I mentioned in like a little, uh, pop-up, not so much annotation thing, but whatever, something like it, a, a caption or whatever, uh, that... Uh, in a certain area right near where Verdanturf Town is, uh, you can actually find a Mawalite in the remake f uh, remakes for uh, the 
this game. Um, so basically, Mega Mawile is a more defensive version of regular Mawile. It gets a lot of special defense as well as a lot more defense, um, but other than that, it's not as great as you might think it is. I mean, it doesn't really have all that much by way of HP, and honestly, if I had a choice in the matter, I would probably prefer just having a lot of one defense stat than a decent-ish amount of both, but they teach their own. If you like using it, go wild. Anyway, uh, there's more Pokemon I do want to buy out during this episode, but uh, that's not going to happen until a little bit later when we head off to the desert. Uh, you'll see why then. Um, so anyway, I'll just leave you to this music. Alright, took care of all these guys up here on Mount Chimney. Yeah, that didn't take all that long, but whatever. Um, so now let's head off to Mauville City first. I need to switch out my bike. While I'm going there, I, I do want to say, um, since it's been so long with two recording sessions, Pokemon Sun and Moon came out! As I've, I think I've mentioned in, Pokemon, er, in Let's Play uh, Final Fantasy V, which has a shorter turnaround period than this game, but whatever. Um, anyway, so yeah, I played that like six times through. I got my hands on an Alolan Muck for one playthrough, and oh my god, do I love that Pokemon. Poison Dark is just such a great type. It really is. Well, I guess now is my chance to see how uh, regular Muck holds up to uh, Lolan Muck. I would like it. Would have liked to have a Dark type on this team, but uh, well, whatever. Fortunately, co type coverage just isn't as big a thing in this generation, since there aren't as many moves. Anyway, now we can go at mock speed. Yeah, I kind of wish this game had like a bike, or, like one bike with two separate gears, kind of like in Pokemon Platinum. Or I think Diamond and Pearl had the two gear bike too. I forget, but not even in the remakes do they have the two gear bike. Although I guess that's just for fidelity to the original, but whatever. Sometimes things just have to change. Oh, sweet! The tower's here! Well, this is why I wanted the mock bike in the first place. This is Mirage Tower. Um, basically, uh, it's just a straight shot right to the top. There's a couple of new Pokemon here. I'm gonna hold off on bioing them for a little bit, though. That all's gonna be a post-commentary deal. I will fight them, though. I could use the experience. You know, assuming I don't get frustrated by a uh, sand attack. Oh Christ. Yeah, I've changed my mind. Um, I would have stuck around if it wasn't for sand attack. I, I just, I can't deal with that crap. It's just, it's not good. I, b I do believe you actually do need the mock bike. Yeah, there we go. So you see these crumbling pits? If you step on them, normally, you'll fall straight through. So what you need to do is ride through them with your mock bike. At turbo speed. Uh, okay. That was a poor example. It's hard to do, but trust me, there's an even harder version of this later on in the game that you're gonna have to get, uh... Have to, yeah, well, I didn't do that right, but yeah, you're gonna need to learn how to do stuff like this in order to make it through the even harder version later on in the game. This is gonna take me a few tries, but whatever. Yeah, see, I screwed up there. I should have gone a little bit further to the left, but whatever. I'm gonna have to have a counter going for this, aren't I? Oh, God! Hey, duh, repel! Don't wear off while I'm in the middle of writing. Come on, game. Throw me a bone here. Throw me a rare bone here. Ha ha! See? I told you I would get it, e eventually. Um, that way is not the way I want to go. 
this way is the way I want to go. Apparently we needed Rock Smash for this way, so I'm glad I brought it with me. See, viewers? I knew there was a reason I had Rock Smash besides getting the mop. Whatever. Um... <laughs> At the top of the Mirage Tower, we've got a pair of fossils here. We've got the Root Fossil, or the Claw Fossil. You can only pick one or the other. The Claw Fossil will get you, um, what's it called again? Aranith, I think it's called? Um, I don't know, I didn't write it in my notes because I didn't think I'd actually get the tower. Um, but I do believe its name is Aerith. I know it evolves into Armaldo, that that I know off the top of my head. But uh, the one I know more is Lilip, which you can get from the root fossil, which evolves into Cradilly. But I'll talk about that more a little bit later when I actually bio them. Um, I'm not going to use either of these two, but I guess out of respect from a friend of mine who loves Cradilly more than... I can understand, I'll just take the Root Fossil. Now, once you take one, the Mirage Tower crumbles, you can't go back, and the other tower will be lost. Or, the other, uh, fossil will be lost. Yeah. See, there it goes. If you're playing the originals, or the remakes, instead you'll find the fossils in some other place entirely. Um, it's like up in the top rightish corner of, uh, the desert map, so that's where you would go. You can only pick one there anyway. But anyway, uh, as I was alluding to, this part is also going to be sped up. I'm going to be taking on every single trainer here in the desert. There are quite a few of them. Um, but other than that, there really isn't a whole lot for me to do here. So I will handle all the bios and stuff, and see you guys at the end of the desert. Alright, we're doing the whole speed up and play music thing again. Sorry to do this to you twice in one episode, but... Uh, we are fighting like a boatload of trainers today and really not a whole lot else, so I figured I might as well just, you know, try this whole speed up music thing out, but I, I think I've said all that before. Um, anyway, uh, as for the bios for the desert Pokemon other than Trapinch, which I bioed uh, last episode, I think. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, first off we've got Cacnea, it's a pure grass type. When it evolves into Cacturn it becomes a grass and dark type. As for its stats, well, uh, they're not, other than its Alolan tier speed, they're not absolute trash. The biggest problem it has going for it, other than its incredibly bad defensive stats, is the fact that it's a mixed attacker, but its stab moves are all special in this generation, so... I've personally never used Cacturn because I wasn't too impressed by it at all, except maybe for the anime, but that's a whole nother tale all together. So yeah, pick your poison with that one, I guess. Um, anyway, up next is, if I can, there we go, sorry about that, I have, well since I'm doing this post commentary, I have Bulbapedia pages pulled up for the stats this time around so I can actually look at them while I'm talking to you. Um, yeah. Anyway, up, up next we've got uh, Ball Toy, which is a ground psychic type, kind of a weirdish type combination. It evolves into Clay Doll, um, which it retains its type, of course. Um, the nice thing about Clay Doll is that it has Levitate, although that doesn't actually get it out of any sort of weaknesses. It's, you know, Levitate, so that's always nice to have. Um, it's quite a good bit, it's qu got quite a good bit of bulk to it, and it's slow, but not as slow as you might think think it should be. Uh, if anything else, you can have it out there to set up on Pokemon and then explode if you want to, which is always fun. You know, I'm always fun, a uh, fan of explosions. <laughs> but, uh, whatever. Speaking of which, it also learns Hyper Beam, I think, which is kind of weird, but, eh, whatever. As for the fossil Pokemon that we've got access to, um, we've got Anorith, not Aranith, I horribly mispronounced that during the uh, episode, but eh, it's too late for that now. Um, and we've also got Lilip. I'll talk about Lilip versus a rock grass type, which is a weird combination. Um, a lot of people always seem to like kind of forget that it's a rock grass type, but I guess because, you know, 
maybe you don't see Cradley too often, or maybe it's just such a weird type combination that you never really think of it. I don't know. But uh, anyway, this thing is annoying, to say the least. It's got pretty decent bulk to it, as well as pretty decent offensive capabilities too. Really, it's only completely garbage stat is its speed, which is, again, a lowland tier. And for those of you who don't get the joke, it's because everything in Alola has like 60 or less base speed. Not really, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's actually not too bad for a playthrough team, and I believe there's been some competitive shenanigans going around with Cradley before, so, you know. I think it learns like a lot of really annoying stalling and chipping down your health moves, which, I mean, I probably wouldn't use it because it would make me feel like a complete scumbag, but, you know, it's a viable strategy. As for Anorith, I'm never gonna leave that down, am I? Um, it's a rock bug type, which is also kind of weird. Not as weird, but kind of weird. Um, Anyway, much like its counterpart in Cradley, it's a evolved form Armaldo, also has really bad speed stat, but uh, Armaldo specializes in its offenses rather than its defenses. It's got quite a good bit of attack, actually, which would make it pretty useful, but again, it is rather slow, and while I guess in a playthrough you could rely a little bit more on its bulk to handle its speed, Personally, if you're going for something that's weak to water and has a shitload of defense, you might as well go all the way and pick an Aaron instead of an Anorith. Yeah, I'm, I'm never gonna live that down no matter how often I correct myself, am I? <sighs> oh well. Anyway, while we're still in the desert, I might as well talk about... Um, the elephant in the room is the fact that uh, there's a sandstorm going on in the desert. Who would have thought? Uh, gee, there's a Darude sandstorm joke in here somewhere, but for the life of me, I just can't think of one. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, basically the way sandstorm works is that um, if you use the move sandstorm, which I believe there's a... well, not believe. There is definitely a TM for sandstorm in the desert. I'll collect it in the episode itself, but uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, as I was saying, if you use the move Sandstorm, the Sandstorm will last for like five turns. Um, I believe it's the same with the ability Sandstream. At least it is in the later generations. Um, but basically, Sandstorm deals damage to any Pokemon that isn't at least part Rock, Ground, or Steel type um, every single round. I think it's like a fixed percentage of your HP. I'm not entirely sure about that one, but uh, anyway. Um, and a lot of abilities out there, I think I'll put them up on screen right now, they work really well together with Sandstorm. So, and they all have like various effects. In general, I'm not too huge a fan of Sandstorm. It really does rely on having a team built around Sandstorm in order to work, but whatever. Um, the fact that there's always a Sandstorm in this particular area of Route 111 is incredibly annoying and the reason why uh, in these fights, Okay, well, one of the reasons why in these fights you'll see me primarily using my Aaron and my Marsh Tom, because both of them are immune to the effects of Sandstorm. Um, I do believe Cacnea's ability also gives it immunity to Sandstorm, just because of how that works, so if you're at all interested, just about everything here is, you know, not susceptible to that uh, Darudeness that we've got going on here. Did I just say Darudeness? Oh my god, that was, that was just too... Uh, that was terrible. I, I apologize for my terribleness, viewers. That, that, that was just inexcusable. Anyway, I'll shut up now and leave you to enjoy this wonderful music that plays in the remakes. Alright, I believe that's the last of the trainers here in the desert, and down here we can get... The TM for Sandstorm. Yeah! Your reward for making it through the sandstorm-filled desert is, in fact, more sandstorms. Darude would be proud. Anyway, um, remember this weird rock formation thing for later. It'll become important a little bit later. A lot bit later. Well, yeah, basically. How many times can I say yeah in this episode? I don't know, and to be honest, I'm not willing to find out. 
Anywho, out of all that fighting, I got a couple of levels for Tyranno, not as much as I would have hoped, but... Oh well. A at this point, I can take all the levels I get on these three. Um, Bell just and Strike and Bahamut are sitting on the back seat because they're not going to be particularly good for the next gym fight. I mean, Belch maybe, just because of sheer bulk, but the other two? Nah, not so much. And besides, considering what the next gym is, we're going to have all the bulk we need by way of Aaron. So, yeah, there is that. Uh, anyway, um, do I want to switch bikes? No, I don't think I do. Um, yeah, I should be good to go. I should just, uh, I could pull in my main man, Bahamut, here into the party. Okay, I just went ahead and stuck my main man, Bahamut, back in the party. Or into the party for the first time, rather. Not that we're going to do a whole lot with Bahamut, but, uh... Well, we'll, uh... Whatever. I'll just keep him in the party just because I can. I'm heading back to Petalburg City now because it's finally time to take on the fifth gym in the game. In the next episode of Let's Play Pokemon Emerald. Yeah, I'm gonna put it off until next time. See you guys then. Thank you. I know I'm awesome at this. <laughs>